Greetings, everybody. Good afternoon. Hi. We're going to give folks a few minutes to join us. Hi, I'm Bridget. I'm the Bird Diva. And I want to welcome you to First Fridays, the first first Friday. Feel free while we are waiting for folks to gather to put in the chat. Look at that. Don, you're awesome. Don's got it. Do what Don just did. Open up the chat and say who you are and where you're joining from. And we will get to know who's, who's joining us for a little sit spot time today. Here, we're going to admit some other people there. There we go. Best bet for today's session and all of our first Friday yeah. sessions is to mute your mic. So I'm going to ask everybody to make sure that you're muted. And at times, if the, um, if the feed gets a little wonky, um, consider turning off your video. Oh my gosh, good. From, from Boston, good. We got folks from Ohio. This is great. We will just keep admitting people. I want to give people about five minutes to, um, to get in and get comfortable. Look at all of you folks. I see some familiar faces. This is really exciting and some new ones as well. Again, welcome. My name is Bridget Butler. I'm also known as the Bird Diva. And this is First Fridays, the first first Friday of guided slow birding. I am on my sit spot outside. And I will share a little bit more about that in just a minute. All right, let's get some more people admitted in. I will let you know that um, there is a limit on the number of people that I can take for these first Friday sessions. Um, it's around 100. We've had 150 people sign up, which is like super exciting, but is also kind of, oh, wow, how are we going to get everybody in here? Know too that I'll record each session and I'm going to post it on my Bird Diva YouTube page so that if you do get bumped out, you don't get into a session, it will be um, a video that you can check out later. And I'm going to look into a way to live stream this as well so that if you do get bumped, you can go to the live stream. All right, here we go. Hi, Ronique. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited you're here from Seattle. Good to see you. Yay, yay, yay. Yeah, so please put in the chat while we're gathering, we can see all the folks from all over. It's really kind of exciting to watch the registrations come in because there were folks from all over the country joining my, my crew, my Bird Diva crew from Vermont and New England. Yay, thank you all for being here. If you're new to the slow birding scene, um, I really hope you enjoy our time together today. And I will share a little bit more with you in just a minute about slow burning. I get as many people in as I can. We're at um, almost two after. I like to like give people a few minutes to try to get in, but I know this time is valuable. So I don't want to hold everybody else up. We got folks from Texas. Hey, all right. Well, as you can see outside at my house right now, Philip, um, it is snowy and cold. All right. We're going to keep admitting people. We're at um, 63 right now. That's pretty good. Give it just a few more minutes as we get folks in. Let's see. I don't know if any of you know Romper Room. Like when I was a kid, we used to watch Romper Room. And I like, okay, Deborah Masterson is like cackling, laughing, because she must remember it. Good job, Deborah. So I am totally dating myself. Um, but I remember in Romper Room, right? Like you, she would go around with that special little lens and she'd be like, I see so-and-so and I see so-and-so. And what's great is I can actually see many of you as I kind of file through. So hi everyone and welcome. All right, I hope you're in a really comfy spot. Um, I am, let's see, we're gonna admit one more here. Here we go, we got Christine in. 
And I'm going to try to keep remembering to admit people as we go, um, if I can. It's hard once we get underway to do that. There's my friend Kelly. We got to get Kelly in here. We are at 66 participants. All right. Welcome to those of you who are just joining. My name is Bridget Butler. I'm also known as the Bird Diva. And I am happy to be hosting these free first Fridays to get people into slow birding a little bit more, um, developing a slow birding practice and a sit spot practice, right? Um, kind of figuring out some different ways to celebrate the ways that we connect with birds. All right. So we are at about four after and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close my little bump out there for participants. We're gonna come back in here and I'm gonna try to find everybody and drop this down. Just keep admitting people as I can. So just a good thing to know for our future First Fridays. Um, I will try to stall as long as I can to get as many people in as possible. Um, and I'll probably do like that last admit all around five after. And we will go from there. There'll always be a recording too. All right, I'm gonna pull up my little share screen thing here and we'll get to welcoming everyone. We are gonna do this and then I'm gonna hit this super fancy advanced mode. Um, so again, I'm outside in Northern Northwestern Vermont for today. Let's see how I can lay this out. I'm just gonna lay some stuff out so that we are all set participants and we'll keep admitting some folks from the waiting room here. One more shot here. All right, so let's see, who can I see? I can see, um, Let's see, Dakota and Don and Nicandra, you're kind of in my screen right now. Can you give me a thumbs up if you see that little slow burning sign? All right, super. So again, here's the formal welcome. Welcome everyone to the first First Friday uh, guided slow burning session. I'm really excited to have all of you here. This is something that I've been um, playing around with. For those of you who might follow me on Facebook, you can find me there. My website is birdiva.com. And that's my handle for most um, social media setups. So please find me in those different places. Um, I'm excited to share this with you because it's something I try to do on a regular basis. And now you guys are gonna hold me accountable because I'm gonna do this the first Friday of every month um, throughout the year. And I hope you'll join me, whether you can join inside or outside. I am being very bold and I am outside today in 20 degree um, weather here in Northwestern Vermont. Um, this is the place of the Flint, where the Mazipskoic flows from the Wiscadawane, which is the Missisquoi River and the Northern Green Mountains. It's the ancestral lands of the Abenaki people who are still a part of our community today here in Northwestern Vermont. I hope that throughout our time today, you will greet the Kajajaj Laziz, that's the chickadee in Abenaki, and the Sigzis, that's goldfinch in Abenaki. And they were just here behind me. Yep, I can still see someone in the shrub there. So my feet are set up behind me and hopefully you'll get a chance to see and hear some of those birds as we spend our time together. It's important for me as someone who works to connect people with the land and with birds to present a land acknowledgement during my programs because it's really about understanding the land our connection to the land and to the first peoples who are part of our communities still and their connection and, and care of the land that, that we are here on now. So I thank you for allowing me that time to, to put my gratitude out there for the land, the chickadees and the gold finches, the, the six, 60s. I'm still working on my Abenaki a little bit. So if you haven't already, please put in the chat where you're from, where you're visiting from. Some of you I know from some of my slow birding classes, whether it's a weekend workshop or a talk um, or an online course. So I'm really happy that you're joining me here today as well. And what we're gonna do today is we're going to 
Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what slow burning is. Um, and each week, we'll try to do some things that are the same each, not each week. Geez, I wish I could do this each week. I'll try to do some of some things that are very similar each week or each month. Um, and then introduce some new prompts that you can play around with and try out for your own practice. All right, I've got to get this window to disappear here. That is overlapped. All right. And so today we'll do um, some really simple, relaxing um, into your sit spot, basic sit spot stuff, how to pick a sit spot and all of that. Um, and, um, and I'm also going to show you some different things that I bring with me when I when I'm on a sit spot as well. All right. So what is slow burning? So for me, slow burning is really about a different way to engage with birds and birding. I kind of got turned off um, by oh the competitive aspect of birding, um, the list driven aspect, the the driving and chasing. And as I really started to question um, those aspects and characteristics of burning that I do love at different times. I really love them, but there was something that was, that was missing for me. And when I started to ask some of those questions, these were the things that, that came up for me. So really it was about stepping back for a moment and thinking about what do I really value when it comes to birding and my birding practice? What is my intent when I go out birding? What do I want to accomplish or experience? And then what is the result? What do I want to have happen after I spend time outdoors observing birds? And that's where this slow burning practice kind of grew from and started to develop. And one of the things that um, I use in the practice is a sit spot. And that's kind of what we're gonna do today. So I am going to stop sharing my screen here and bring everybody back. All right, we'll bump this up so I can see people. I'm, gonna, I'm like looking, most people are inside today and that's okay. I'm gonna recommend that when you do this, you try to do this by, um, try to do it by a window if you can. Um, and maybe even have that window open a crack or two so that you can smell the smells that are on the air and you maybe even can hear the voices of the birds. Right now, when I stop and I listen for a minute, I can hear the gold finches in the trees above me, just their little twittering and chatting. And we have some wonderful pine trees in my backyard here and I can hear the wind blowing them. So this is a sensory experience. So while you, you can totally do this from inside, allow yourself that opportunity to connect through your senses in that window just a little bit for just a little bit of time. I wanna welcome other folks who have started to come in. We're still getting people in. We have about 80 participants right now. So I'm happy you all are here. So sit spot. So where am I right now? So I am. I live in a very small city in Northwestern Vermont called St. Albans. And I, I live like within three or four blocks from downtown. Now it is Vermont. So there's woodland really nearby. And as I told you before, I am very close to the Missisquoi River, the Mazipsko Ick. And um, so the river enters into Lake Champlain at the, the north end, right near the Canadian border. I have houses all around me. I have, there's a house there, there's a house there. There's, luckily I have woodland here, but there's houses all around me, but I still have birds. One of the practices that I really enjoy at the beginning of the year is starting a backyard bird list. This is something I learned from um, my friend, Rob Fergus who used to work with me at the National Audubon Society. He believes you need a recommended daily allowance of birds and that you should go out and try to set a goal for how many birds you want to just encounter in a day in order to connect. And, and, and what he started to do was track that. And it's really kind of amazing what you start to notice 
when you're paying attention to who's coming through your yard. So I would encourage you to do that. At my house, we have it on a big, huge post-it note in our um, sunroom where we can all add to it. And we just add the new birds that we see and hear while we're standing in our yard. All right, so sit spot. Mine's literally right outside my door. I take five steps that way and my house is right there. Normally when I sit on my sit spot, I open the door and I sit down on the steps. And one of the really, I think, important things that we forget is nature is all around us. We're not separate from it, no matter where we live, whether it's an urban environment or a rural environment, nature is there. And we just have to kind of slow down and take the time to see it and to notice it. So picking a good sit spot means picking some place that you can visit every day easily. Maybe that's the parking lot where you pull in to work and you just decide I'm gonna spend 20 minutes out here at lunch or I'm gonna spend 20 minutes, I'm gonna drive in early and I'm gonna spend 20 minutes there. Maybe it's um, you go grocery shopping once a week and you have a place that you might like to stop all along the way. Maybe you walk every day and you have a route that you walk routinely every day and you can have a to-go sit spot kind of practice as well. So I wanna show you what I bring with me when I um, go out to my sit spot. Um, the very first most important thing is this, and I'm really hoping that, oh yeah, there, can you see the steam off of it? Yes, it's a hot beverage, especially during the winter time. So this is my ginger tea. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I put nice Vermont honey in it. Mm, as well. So bring your favorite beverage. This is a, this is cozy birding. That's what this is about. I have today, I actually have a sleeping bag. I have a sleeping bag that I'm sitting on and I have wrapped around me. So I stay nice and warm. I've got some good layers. I got lined jeans on and my big old winter boots. And I also bring some other things. I bring um, a notebook and a pencil. I have a nice field journal that I like to bring with me. Um, when I go out and sit, I try not to bring my phone. Don't bring your phone. Let go of the phone. Try to step away from the phone for a little bit and be away from it. So this is a time for you and for you to connect with the birds. All right, so you got a hot drink. You've got, um, you've got something to write with. And okay, the other thing. Oh, and I forgot to bring that out here. Let's see if I can stand up my tea there so it can cool off a little bit. The other thing that I bring is something to sit on. So when I first started doing sit spots, I had this really awesome small thermarest pad that I would bring with me and it blew up really quick. And it's only as big as, as my butt, right? So just enough to sit on. And it could pack really easily into my backpack or it, um, it was just something that I could stash by the door really easily. Binoculars, you could bring your binoculars or you might not wanna bring your binoculars, it's up to you. Sometimes it's really great to sit and observe the birds without the distraction of of the equipment and just be sitting and noticing. So I wanna give you permission to let go of the binoculars from time to time, bring them with you or don't bring them with you depending on, I don't know how you're feeling that day. And I also wanna say if you're a regular birder, if you're an experienced birder, I wanna push you to leave them behind sometimes. That's about birding your edge, like getting edgy here. We do that in slow birding a bit where I try to push people to their edge where it's just a little bit uncomfortable and maybe you're like, oh, I'm not sure about this. And the more you try it and the more you settle into it, I don't know, maybe it's a new practice for you is leaving those binoculars behind. Okay, the other thing I wanna show you before we do a couple of exercises together is my backpack. So I told you, you can do this. You could do this on the go as well. So I have a really small pack that I like to take with me when I go birding. And in it, so my, what's awesome is my tea fits on the side. My, my tea canteen sits right on the side. Sometimes it's coffee. Sometimes at the end of the day, it might be a glass of wine. A little travel pack and a wine. So in my bag, I've got my field journal. Okay. 
this is a right in the rain, all weather book. So uh, you could spill coffee on it like I did one time and your notes will be all right. The paper won't deteriorate and melt. And it also, you can write on it, well, in the rain or in the snow. So as the pages get wet, you can still write on it. So that's a really kind of cool type of field notebook. Buy yourself something cool and pretty, something that you want to write in, um, something leather bound or something that, I don't know, just really you want to write in it. You want to record what you're noticing. This is another blanket. This was for fall. Um, it's, it's a little bit light, too lightweight for now. So I have my sleeping bag with me, but this rolls up really nice and just tucks in my bag. So I can throw that over my lap if I'm getting cold. And then the most important thing, now I don't like to sit on the ground anymore. Ugh. I'm 50 and so it's a little hard to get up sometimes. So what I have now is I have a little folding camp stool that also fits in. And we got one more person coming in uh, that fits in my backpack. And this I got for like, I don't know, maybe 20 bucks online. And it's, it's as small as that blanket was. And it just folds out just like that. And so what I've been doing when I go and visit places that I would like to bird, um, whether it's like a wildlife refuge or a town forest, is this is the pack that I bring with me. And basically I can walk off the trail a little bit. Maybe there's a flutter of activity. Maybe I come upon some ducks at the water's edge and I can set myself up and I can sit in, sit down, sit. In. Ooh, the ravens are coming through. Oh, I hope they come close enough so you can hear them. We have ravens that are now nesting on the radio tower, the cell tower, just off of Route 89, which is the main highway here that runs north-south in um, Vermont. And it's been awesome. So we have ravens now cruising the neighborhood. I hope they come in and you'll be able to hear them. So I'll pull up off the side of the trail, set myself up and get cozy. I've got my, my well used and bead on Sibley's field guide that I bring with me as well um, so that I can make note of what I see and look up stuff when I might feel a little bit perplexed about what I'm noticing or what I'm hearing. All right, so who's ready to begin? We need to do some stuff together. I know Deborah's like, yes. Okay, so here's what I'm hoping is is each time we get together, we can kind of um, set the mood. Um, and now that you know what to bring, and if you're bold enough, and I'm looking at you folks that are maybe in warmer climates than me, I, I would love to see in February some other people outside. Now, I can tell that some people are by windows because every once in a while the binoculars go up. So that's good. You're already birding while I'm talking. Super cool. I can't wait to hear about what you see. I'll check the chat in just a minute. All right, so let's do something together here. So what I wanna do is I wanna share with you the, the practice that I use that, that settles me in. Um, a, a lot of times, and I'm, I'm sure you guys are experiencing this as well, we go to nature to be refreshed Oh, to be held, to be cared for, to, to let go of things and troubles. Um, oh my gosh, Anne says there's an Anna's hummingbird coming to her feeder. All right, jazz hands for Anne. Yes, all right, that's awesome. Anna's hummingbird, so cool. No hummingbirds here right now. Not, not to my knowledge in Vermont at this point in time. So I try each time I go out to do the same thing. So there's a bit of a routine, okay? So this is the point where I want you to find a spot where you can be comfortable and that, and Ronique's got a hummingbird too in her yard, yay! So this is the time when you wanna sit somewhere where you can gaze out the window, okay? All right, and I want you to get cozy in your seat. So you're gonna place your chair and you're gonna get cozy and have that cup of tea or whatever you need in your field guide. And the very first thing I want you to do is just take a nice, deep, cleansing breath right in through the nose and then exhale out through your mouth and just let your shoulders drop. I'm gonna do this 
I've been so keyed up and excited about this today that I feel like my shoulders are up in my ears. And that's not a really great state to be in when you're trying to enjoy birds. All right, and I'm gonna close my eyes. And I'm gonna invite you to do the same thing just for a minute. Maybe you open the window just a little bit so you can hear things. Take that moment to take a nice deep breath and then relax again. Awesome. Now, if things come into your space, like right now, I don't know if you can hear the fire alarm, the, the ambulance, it's either ambulance or fire in the background in my, is just acknowledge it and, and let it go. One of the things I teach in slow burning is about listening to the whole space, the whole soundscape. And a lot of times when we focus on one bird or one thing, it can be a barrier to connecting with that bird because we're trying so hard to hear just one thing. So one of the things that we can try to do is allow all those things in. Yeah, Jane says she's listening to snow plows. Yay, okay. Let all those things in. We're not gonna judge them. We're just gonna be like, that's part of this broader soundscape where my sit spot is. And I am going to learn to allow all those sounds to be and still enjoy the birds. Okay, so we're still going to enjoy the birds. So we're gonna relax into this space. The next thing I like to do is just kind of, well, space out a little bit. And I'm gonna look away from the camera. I'm looking up now at my neighborhood and I want you to just kind of open your gaze up, soften your gaze on the land. We're not trying to find any one thing right now. Or just relaxing into the space. Maybe playing around with a little bit of our peripheral vision, right and left, and figuring out where that space is, where how far can we see to the right and the left in those different spots. Awesome. The next thing I want you to try is and, I, and this is really funny because above me right now, I have our sun umbrella for the summertime so that the snow stays off of my computer. So I can't look all the way up to the sky. So I want you, for me, to look skyward or ceilingward, as the case may be, or as far up in your view as you can see in your window. Like, what is that edge look like? So if I look up to the edge of the umbrella here and out to the edge here, Ooh, that's almost like a stretch, isn't it? Mm. And then over to the side, there goes the raven. <gasps> Yay. Oh my gosh. Just sailing by. See, right? Expanding your gaze, expanding your awareness, right? And looking up. There we go. I see Mary looking right out her window right now. Good job, Mary. <laughs> How far up can I see? If I scoot closer to the window, can I see more? Okay, how far to the right? What about down? In, when I sit inside, there's all these birds that are hanging out on the ground. Where is the best spot for me to sit, especially if I'm inside doing my sit spot so that I can see the birds that might be feeding on the ground as well? All right. It just got really quiet. And the ravens are still calling in the background just a little bit. Red-tailed hawk, awesome. So I am noticing in the chat, folks are sharing some of their observations. This is great. Yes, please feel free to do that. Chloe, who I know is from Northern Vermont with me, she's got some woodpeckers, yay, hanging out. Anybody else have things that they are noticing? <gasps> Ooh, I just heard the wee of a goldfinch behind me. Good, all right. So hopefully some of you have a little bit of um, paper and a pencil here. I'm gonna take a sip of tea. I'm, I'm surprisingly warm. 
for 20 degrees. I did a good job preparing here. I think I'm doing all right. Don says he's got juncos, goldfinches, nut hatches, awesome chickadees. A flock of finches, good. It seems like it's definitely a goldfinch year here in Vermont. Lots of finches at feeders right now, which is wonderful. Okay, so now we're gonna, we're gonna move to engaging our right brain a little bit and we're gonna do a little bit of drawing. And sometimes I like to do this when I get to a new spot, especially to a new spot because it's not a spot that I've been to before and I wanna get to know it. I'm gonna try to find my, my notebook here. Um, I like working in my notebook sometimes. Um, I go back and forth between vertically and horizontally and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to work in like the landscape mode right now. And maybe for you, those of you who are sitting at a window, you have your window scape, right? Maybe you draw, I'm just going to draw, I'm just going to pretend I'm at my window. So my windows, when I sit at my sit spot. You know, the crows are coming in now. Okay, so my windows are kind of like that. They're like that double pane. And maybe you make a drawing like this. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a little X marks the spot. And then I'm going to draw what's around me. And this is just for you, right? So part of the, one of the ways that we can get to know the birds is where they are on the landscape. And when you visit your sit spot over and over and over again for at least 20 minutes each time, 20 minutes is like a great kind of measuring device, not only for a tolerable amount of time to spend outside, especially when it's cold out, but it's also the amount of time that your body needs to really absorb the benefits of being outdoors. It's around 20 minutes when you start, you personally start to let go of all of that other stuff and you can actually be in and be with nature. So 20 minutes, right? And your cortisol levels start to change and all of those good chemicals in your body start firing um, and helping, helping you out, right? So it's kind of a wellness thing. The other thing about 20 minutes is takes about 20 minutes for birds to relax and start to come back in around you. So if you pick a sit spot that you're gonna go to frequently over and over and over again, the birds will start to get used to you. And the more time you spend on that sit spot, the more used to you they will get and come in closer to you as well. So that's really kind of special. All right, so back to the map. So if you have a window, if you're doing the window thing, I just want you to draw some stuff in there. Is it? trees like I know outside of our window we have our feeders um, and then we have a bunch of Christmas trees that we've collected from everybody in the neighborhood we have about eight Christmas trees in the corner over here right now that we pile up as cover for the birds so I'm just going to draw those in my window scene what does your window scene look like I have a, a window feeder as well um so when we do this, we're really engaging like that right creative side of our brain. And this is just a sloppy little sketch. And maybe as I'm sitting here, if I was inside, my lovely little goldfinches. So this up here is the window feeder that's stuck to our window. And then that's the feeder that's outside. I'm pretending I'm inside right now for those of you that are sitting inside and trying to draw what you notice. If you're outside, the other thing that you can do, and I'm going to do this really quick because I have a brook. I'm really lucky that I live within walking distance to the city, but I have a brook. And then all my neighbors behind me, it's all forested, which is great. So there aren't any houses behind me because of the way the roads work. Um, but then I have, you know, I have other neighbors. Let's see, the big pine tree is right here. So I'm going to kind of draw that. I'm gonna put pine and I know there's a feeder behind me. There's a dish feeder and then there's a platform feeder with a suet cake off of it. So I'm gonna draw that right and then the house. The house is here. When we do this and we start mapping in our brain, 
that spot that we sit, we also start to get to know where the birds like to hang out. So one of the things that I've started to notice in our yard is that there are places where the birds really like to perch. And it's not just the feeders. So if we think about chickadees or birds that grab seed like nuthatches or titmice and leave the feeder, they have places they like to go to go open those seeds. Do you know where that place is in your yard? Hmm, that might be a good one to figure out. So by mapping that and just drawing, right? I have, now I have like X, no, we're not looking at the window. We're looking at this one. X marks the spot. I got my big pine tree. That's where I'm sitting. The brook is up here. Well, yep, the forest is over here and my house is actually right there as that barrier, luckily to the wind right now. So these are some of the things that, that I like to do, especially when I get to a, a new spot is do a little sketching so that I can kind of get the lay of the land and where the birds might like to be. It's also engaging. Oh, here come the goldfinches. They're coming back. I just heard them flutter in above. So that's great. Maybe they'll come into, into the view. You can just barely see the feeder there. If I tip this down. Oh, there we go. Can you hear them? Other than me trying to mimic, can you hear the goldfinch? And now they're quiet again. So those are some things to try. Try mapping, sketching. And I know, right, like I don't like any of my artwork. Whenever I was told um, in college um, or the different nature centers that I worked at, oh, you got to have a field journal. You got to start drawing stuff. Um, I think I just stopped doing it because I didn't like how I drew. I, did, I, I didn't think it was good enough. Um, and I, I really want to encourage you to give yourself permission to try, take that risk, push that edge. You don't have to show the pictures to anybody else um, but you. They're just for you. And it's a way to um, strengthen your observation skills and heighten your awareness of the place that you are. And it's really kind of a fun thing to flip back through. When you flip back through your notebook, I have, um, this one is really fun. This is one of my maps that I drew of a group sit that we did. And look at those arrows. Those are all the birds zipping around back and forth. Little four letter bird code to capture those. But it's really just kind of a cool memory then that I have of the spot that I visited. I'm trying to see, oh, here's like, here's another one, right? and. One of the other things I have found that I've started to do is kind of get into the different types of plants. And that connection then tells me what's possible on the land as well. So just something fun to try. All right. So what I wanna make sure that I do this first time around is establish some foundation practices for you. So what we just did in a really simple way was found a way to pick a sit spot, right? So we wanna pick something that's close by, pick one that's inside and one that's outside. Set yourself up for success, right? What's that best window that has good food, cover, shelter, all of that stuff where you can notice the birds. Maybe that's a spot that you already know Maybe you have feeders out at that spot already. Um, maybe you need to discover a new spot from your house to view birds. My daughter has a um, double window up on the second floor and we slid her bed around a different way and all of a sudden the view was completely different. And she can watch the crows in the morning leaving their winter roosting spot and streaming across the neighborhood. And it's the best spot to see them in the house. Um, in the morning. So play around with what you have inside in terms of a great sit spot and then find that spot outside or pack yourself a bag and pull over when you're out walking around. There's no reason that you can't stop and sit and be with whatever birds are there. Um, it doesn't always have to be a walk. It doesn't, you don't always have to finish the trail. You don't always have to complete the eBird checklist, right? You can bird in different ways and connect with birds in different ways. And then the second thing was, is to draw. Try drawing, sketching, 
um, playing around with maps and that will help you connect with the land and with the place. And we'll do that a little bit more as we play around together on these first Fridays. All right, each, each month I want to wrap up with a quote. So I'm gonna to try to do that right now. Let's see what we can do. So I am going to share again. And I can see Don again. Don, can you see that slide? Okay, awesome. And we're gonna to go to this one. One of the things that I discovered as I started to question how I was birding differently and what I valued about birding, and it really was this slowing down and birding in place and connecting with things that were like right outside my door is I started to discover all these wonderful female naturists whose stories have not been told the way they should be. And one of them is Florence Miriam Bailey. She is actually um, the person who wrote the first field guide to birds in uh, the United States. It was Birds Through an Opera Glass. And I encourage you to grab that as a winter read. This quote comes from another book of hers called A Birding on a Bronco. Now, this is a really cool book. So she, um, she actually um, spent some time out west. And one of the ways that she got to know the land was by riding a horse. And she used to um, attach her camp chair to the saddle and ride out into the landscape and set herself up to sit and observe birds for the day. And she says in A Burning on the Bronco, the temptations that come to conscientious observers are common to humanity. And one of the subtlest is to undervalue what is at hand and overvalue the rare or the distant. Unless a bird is peculiarly interesting, it requires a definite effort to sit down and study him or her in our own dooryard or where he or she is so common as to be an everyday manner. So, I think that slow birding and getting to know the birds that are right outside your door on a deeper level, really truly knowing them is a great foundation for bird adventures that you might take elsewhere. I'm so glad all of you joined me here today and I really hope that you will take some time to connect with me again somehow. You can visit my website um, at birddiva.com. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I do presentations for whoever would like to listen. So if you have a local bird club or you work for an organization that's interested in um, a different approach to enjoying and connecting with birds, please reach out to me. And if you're interested in other programs, especially if you like to read coming up in February, I have the Birders Book Club. We're gonna read some different um, excerpts um, from a book called Bird Watching. Um, with American Women by Deborah Strom. So we'll read different selections from that. It's a really great anthology. And in March, I have a five-week online course called Intro to Slow Burning that's coming up. Um, and we'll dive into all of this a little bit deeper. And we have another first Friday to look forward to together in February. So I want to thank you all so much for joining me today. I am going to record this. We'll pop it on my YouTube page. And um, please check me out on Facebook or Instagram. I'll kind of put a notice out um, when it goes up. I may even send an email. I wish you all wonderful birding adventures. Have a great weekend. And thanks for being here. Bye, you guys. <laughs>